What's up, Pirate fans? I'm Liam Harding, and alongside me, Chris Ellison, and we're here to give you the post-game recap of the Seton Hall versus Columbia Lions game. You know, the Seton Hall lost a tough one, 83-76. to And, Chris, you know, as we saw, Columbia just came right out of the gates, firing on all cylinders. So what do you think, you know, got caught? Seton Hall just didn't adapt. What are some of your thoughts on that? Columbia came out swinging, like you said, scores 25 points in that first quarter. I think I think the thing that really got Seton Hall in trouble was the boards, the rebounding. You know, Columbia just looked active all night on the glass. Seton Hall always looked a step slow. So I think – I truly think this game was lost and won by Columbia on the rebounding front. I have to agree with you right there. Rebounding is a very important thing. That seems to be both men's and women's teams are lacking on. Two of our best rebounders, Kay Sutterfield and Maya Bembry, both averaging over seven rebounds a game had a combined one rebound. Coach B had to say this, though, about their performance tonight. Well, our kids, you know, gave a you know, good effort. Like I told our kids in there, you got to be ready to play from the beginning of the game. And you got to come out and you got to make shots and make plays. At the end of the day, you got to make some plays. And to their credit, they made some plays in the first quarter, for sure. So we're chasing the whole game, you know, and we just – even the second and third quarters, well – you know, they were even or we gained four points. We just didn't play well. Like, we were just fortunate. I thought they didn't They didn't play particularly well. And in the fourth quarter, we take the lead on a great run, two separate leads. You know, Shea Hagan's shoe falls off. We should have fouled somebody. We only had three team fouls just to stop the play. Instead, we let a kid shoot a three, and, of course, she makes it. Then we let a, a, a player off their bench, you know, Kennedy, who made some big shots for her make a big shot for them down the stretch. Like, you know, at the end of the day, we they made the plays and we didn't. In this heartbreaking match, we saw one dominant performance, that of transfer Azana Baines. Chris, what do you think about her performance tonight? Azana played out of her mind tonight. Total confidence, total focus I saw from her tonight. She was active on the boards. She was active scoring the ball, 20-point outburst from her tonight. I think if she, if she, if they can, if they get, the Pirates can get that from her every night, you know, active on the boards, attacking the basket, get into the lane, get into the free throw line. The Pirates are going to make a good run this year. Yeah, you said it best right there. She erupted for some tw for 20 points after coming on the season, returning from injury against Princeton, having zero points in 12 minutes. You know, this shows Coach B that when Sydney Cooks ever gets into foul trouble or is having that off night, Azana can step right in and uh, fit that role right there. Another good transfer um, that we saw a good performance of was Shaylin Haggins from Penn State. Shaylin Haggins picked up right where Warren Park Lane kind of slacked off tonight. What do you think about Shaylin's performance? Shaylin looked very comfortable out there. She looked very poised. She looked like she was able to initiate the offense. You know, some new people this year, so the offense is not going to be where it should be towards the end of the year. But she looked very comfortable out there handling the ball, initiating offenses, running plays. I think if the Pirates can get that her from her on a consistent basis, along with Azana Baines, this team, this team, the ceiling is as, as, as far – or as high as they want to take it. I agree with you right there. She had 13 points, double digits for the fourth game of the season. She's doing immaculate out there, really fitting into Coach B's system. The sky is the limit for her, and when she gets in that groove, the sky's the limit for the team. The competition, though, does not get any easier. After two of the best Ivy League teams that the Ivy League has to offer, they go into the Paradise Gym over the Thanksgiving holiday, playing against Virginia and Commonwealth University down in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. We have some tough competition, Coach B said there. What do you think, though, in the long-term run of this co deep competition that we're playing? You know, we played Georgia there, Virginia Commonwealth, a bunch of really good teams, Georgia being one of the best in the SEC. Do you think if we win some of these games or even if they're close losses, do you think this is going to help us make that run in the postseason? For sure, for sure. I think we're playing – Seton Hall's playing tough competition, like Coach said in the press conference. They play tough competition, so at the end of everything, they still get that nod, they still get that in. In the, in the tournament. But I, th I personally think if Seton Hall gets back to playing Seton Hall basketball, and what I mean by that is active on the boards, get into the lane, get into the free throw line, making open shots, if they can get back to that, then I, I don't see a way that they continue to have losses like this. Yeah, you kind of touched upon it right there. We asked Coach B about the competition leading forward in the season, and this is what he had to say on the matter. We play three games in three days. You know, we obviously got to really test our shape. Level VCU played, we lost, we beat them by three points to NIT. Wisconsin's a very good team. They scored 100 points the other night. And obviously, Georgia's one of the top teams in the SEC. We're going to have a hard schedule. 
a really hard schedule. Then we come back and play two league games. It's, it's not easy. Like, you know, we set a schedule up so if we win enough games non-league, it gives us a chance. We still have plenty of opportunities. We've got to start winning those games. I mean, Princeton was right here for us to win the game. Columbia's right here for us to win the game. Although Seton Hall didn't play to the best of their abilities, we got to give credit where credit is due, and that comes from the three-headed monster of the attack from Columbia Lions from beyond the arc. The three-headed monster had um, the three-point percentage was insane for the Lions. Chris, what are some of your thoughts on the performances tonight from the Lions? Caitlin Davis, Kitty Henderson, and Abby Shu went absolutely crazy tonight. They all, all three of them played aggressively, hitting shots from behind the arc. Caitlin Davis finished the game with 12 rebounds. That was huge for Columbia. They, they, they really made some tough shots, especially Abby Shu, number 35, made some a tough, especially tough threes throughout this game. So that really just comes down to good shot making, good defense, but better shot making. Yeah, you said it great right there. They made some insane shots, even with the hands in their faces from Warren Park Lane and Alexia out there. Coach B had this to say about the performance of Columbia and the lack thereof from Seton Hall. They made some tough shots, including being down two and the kid making a three. Like, you know, come on. So, yeah, our adjustment offensively was to swing the ball and move the ball a little bit more. And defensively, just come out and play a little tougher. And we did. We gave up 23 points in the third quarter. And I know 22, but 18 in, in really in the last quarter. It's not okay. That'll be all for us here in the Walsh Gymnasium. Again, I'm Liam Harding alongside Chris Ellison. Seton Hall's women's basketball team is going to take the trip down to St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands for the Paradise Jam. But we'll be back in the Walsh Gymnasium December 4th in their first conference game against Marquette. Until then, have a nice day and go Pirates.